Hello, and welcome to the fifth part of my series on using the TI-83 series calculator. This video will discuss using the calculator to do complex arithmetic. This is the first video that gets into actual content of an algebra class, and not merely how to work the calculator. If you don't do complex arithmetic in your class, then you can skip this episode without worrying about it. The first thing that you need to do is change your settings to complex mode. You do this by hitting mode and then going to the second to last row and changing the value from real to A plus BI. This is the rectangular complex mode. Now it's my personal opinion that you don't want to keep it in complex mode because the majority of the time you're not using complex numbers. More often than not it shouldn't be a problem if you're in complex mode to do anything with real numbers but eventually, months or even years later, you may get an unexpected answer that may take you off guard. And it might, be, it might take a little while to remember that your calculator is in complex mode. But it usually wouldn't be the end of the world if you keep it in complex mode. I'm not going to completely recap everything about complex arithmetic because that's something to be learned in the actual class. But remember that a complex number is a number of the form a plus bi, where i squared is negative 1. You're going to need to remember some of the other aspects of complex arithmetic before understanding everything in this video. Um, but it's still something that you should pr you're probably going to learn in class if you do complex arithmetic in your class. Now that you're in complex mode, doing complex arithmetic is pretty simple. I just need to know that i is the second function of the decimal key, so I can just plug in complex numbers directly into my calculator. Now when I'm using complex numbers on my calculator, I often need to put a single complex number in parentheses. For example, notice that what I did above, I typed in this, 4 plus 5i times 3 plus 7i. This, however, without parentheses, would be the wrong way to do it. Because remember that you need to FOIL out two complex numbers. This wouldn't be an issue if you're just adding two complex numbers, but it will be an issue for subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So it's good practice to always put parentheses around your complex numbers. The third page of the math menu is the complex menu. It has seven functions here. Conjugate, real part, imaginary part, angle, which is the same thing as argument, absolute value, which is the same as the modulus, and two conversion functions that convert to rectangular form or polar form. You're probably not going to be doing anything in polar form for an algebra class, but you might for a trig class. And because of that, you probably won't be doing argument or angle either. The first five functions in this list work exactly like the other functions. But the last two work more like the frac function in the math menu, so you have to put it after the answer rather than before. But again, you probably won't be using this in an algebra class. As a side note, notice that in this example, the answer has an ellipsis after it. And as a quick English lesson, an ellipsis is the same as dot dot dot. This means that we can hit the right arrow key to see more of the answer. We'll see much more of this when we get to matrices. Also note that this answer is given in radians, not degrees. So if you try this on your calculator and you're wondering why you're getting a different answer, try changing to radian mode. 